Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My wife was caught cheating days before giving birth. Now, I'm left questioning if the baby is mine. I, male, 34, have been married to my wife, Lindsay, female, 32, for the last four years and it was a really fun relationship. We both met at a swingers party, and while that may seem odd to a lot of people, it was a wild time in our lives back when I was 27, and it just reflected on our alternative choices in life. While it's not exactly correlated, both Lindsay and I are vegan, believe in alternate spirituality, and want to keep an open mind on a lot of issues. I guess you could call us modern hippies. For the first few years of our time together, we were in an open relationship, and we were quite public about it. Part of our lifestyle is being unashamed of who we are, and this means that we don't hide our sexual choices or anything of that sort. Amazingly, I even got my sister Jessie, female 23, to understand why our relationship is the way it is, and she is also currently in an open relationship. However, when I proposed to Lindsay, I also broached the topic of making our relationship a closed, monogamous one. I felt like committing just to her, and it was the way I envisioned our marriage together. I had asked her then and there because my feelings were changing, and I needed to know if she was on the same page. While she was elated to become my fiancé, I will admit it took a bit of convincing to make her also agree to a monogamous relationship. We did have clear communication during the whole process though and are now happily married. Another reason that I didn't want an open relationship anymore was, well, because I was looking to start a family with Lindsay and I felt like becoming a smaller unit when we raised our child. I've seen it done before where an open relationship welcomes a child into the family, but I did not find it in myself to do this. However, at the same time, a lot of our friends and my social network online is still filled with people who swing people who have different sexual choices and more. I respect this as part of my life and still defend the idea of free love vehemently. Lindsay got pregnant in March last year, and we were both super excited. I was crazy about Lindsay. We even became kind of micro-influencers during this time by talking about our past and our opinions and also documenting our pregnancy journey together. It wasn't our main source of income, but it was something we really enjoyed. To be honest, most of the ad revenue from our videos went to Lindsay, as I make a lot more than her due to my field of work. Software while hers is sales at a small company, and I don't mind this setup. I do it for fun and for her. It becomes a way of earning a reasonable chunk of money. From finding a good hospital to discovering the financial side of raising a baby, we made a lot of how-tos and tutorials on the whole journey. A couple of weeks before the due date was bound to arrive, my sister also told me she was flying in and staying with us to make sure everything went smoothly. She's also a big fan of our YouTube channel and said that she wanted to report on us as well. She works at an internet media company. She was staying with us, and that was a bit of a relief for me as well. Even though Lindsay was pregnant, I wasn't able to find any time off, and that led to me constantly fretting about my wife while I was at work. Jessie being there was a welcome change for me, and it kept me satisfied that she would be able to help if anything happened. The second day Jessie was there, she called while I was at work and said, Hey OP, I know I was going to cover your channel as a part of our coverage from X. Removing the name of the place she works at, but it's amazing that you've brought back something modern and unique to your relationship dynamic. But Lindsay said she wants to keep everything under wraps. Maybe you could help me convince her to allow me to cover this angle. I had just come to the office and I'll be honest, I had no clue what she was talking about. When I asked her to explain in detail, she said very matter-of-factly, Oh, the fact that you have a pregnancy and an open relationship again. Uh, what? I asked her where she got this idea from, and she told me that she had seen Lindsay video calling someone calling him baby and lover, and they were discussing a lot of intimate details about the pregnancy. When Jessie asked her who this person was, Lindsay said that she was talking to a boyfriend and that I knew about it. I had to find out more about this, and I was getting more and more concerned by the minute by now, even Jessie could tell that she had been lied to, and she began to console me. I wasn't even sure how to react to all of this. I decided to immediately head home and confront Lindsay about it. But on the drive back, I get another call from my sister, this time panicky, and telling me that Lindsay's water had broken. I guided her and told her about the hospital she should go to. And I also told her not to tell Lindsay that I knew what she had done. I know she was a terrible person. If what my sister had told me was true, but I was still going to make sure this baby was delivered safely. I mean, it could still be my kid, right? I ended up waiting at the hospital with Jesse Thayer, I got more info on what she overheard on the video call, and it was all but confirmed that my wife had been caught cheating on me. She probably knew about Jesse also being in an open relationship and tried to use that as an excuse to cover up. Obviously, that was on really shaky ground, but what was she going to do at that moment? While waiting for news on the baby, I was nervous, nauseous, and angry. I knew that even if the kid was mine, there would be no way we could continue with the relationship. I felt betrayed and very rashly decided to record a video of myself at the hospital, which was basically me saying that Lindsay had cheated on me 
and that this whole channel was now a sham. I was going to leave and I ranted about how two-faced my wife had been. I then scheduled it to be uploaded. Both my wife and I had admin control over the channel and both of us were equal personalities on social media. With that one, I just ended up waiting for the baby to be delivered. Once we were allowed into the delivery room, I could see that the kid wasn't mine. Like, even Lindsay had been able to hide her cheating. I would have to be some kind of numbskull to not realize something fishy was afoot. I looked at her exhausted face and I felt no sympathy, just bitterness. I said, I know I know what you did and immediately turned around and left. I texted her saying she could find her way back home or ask her boyfriend to pick her up. Then I called my attorney. In simple terms, I explained the situation to him and asked him to figure out the best possible way to ruin her life. I did a lot of other stupid stuff as well, like ranting on an Instagram live. Basically burning any bridges and networking contacts Lindsay had made through her social media journey. In all this time, my sister had also come back from the hospital telling me that the same person she had seen on the video call with Lindsay had in fact come to pick her up. I just broke down at this point and we spent the day dealing with the issue and slowly informing our friends and family about it. I wasn't being very private about it, and I didn't hold back on telling everyone exactly what happened. The facts don't portray Lindsay in a very good light, so everyone sided with me. Once the initial shock of everything wore off, I also settled down and decided to figure out the divorce properly. It's been a few days since Lindsay's child has been born. The video went live and my rant also gained a lot of traction. Needless to say, the internet is mean and the channel has no hope of surviving after this controversy. With a cooler head, I feel like I was an H, not for just one particular thing, but the whole destructive, and very public rampage I went about on social media, basically ruining Lindsay's income. I know that she probably can make enough to live comfortably alone, but with a baby, I need to ask, did I go too far? Update 1. My soon-to-be ex-wife called me and screamed about how terrible I was being to a woman who just had a baby. She said that she didn't care that the relationship had ended, but the way I had sabotaged her career was a low blow. She then mocked me and blamed me for her cheating, saying that I should have known that she was lying about being cool with a monogamous setup. I didn't say much and I basically told her the channel was both of our work and I have the right to post whatever I want, since I didn't lie about anything. I also recorded the phone call on the advice of my lawyer. I live in a one-party consent state and after hearing it, he said it'll help during the divorce. Update 2 My sister told me that she also got a call from Lindsay threatening her and cussing her out for not keeping her mouth shut. It just seems like Lindsay is digging a deeper and deeper hole for herself and we ended up filing a restraining order against her. Her boyfriend all this time has asked her to deal with the divorce herself and is very non-involved. I just hope to move on from all of this and continue on with my life. ESH I do think you went a little overboard with the social media rants, and to be honest you did it with malicious intent. I do think it's good that you guys have found closure and I do think forgiving without letting her back is the best way to go. That's the most evil but also justified way to get back at her. Also, props to your sister for asking you immediately. Next story. After 18 years, my husband still buys me jewelry I hate. He calls me ungrateful, but I call it disrespect. Husband and I have been together for 18 years. At the start, he asked me what kind of gifts do I enjoy getting. Before I could even answer, he said, I bet you like jewelry. All women like jewelry. I was nice but corrected him saying that no, not all women like jewelry, especially not me. I told him I very rarely wear it and when I do I'm quite picky about what I wear. I told him I really hated yellow gold. I asked him not to buy me jewelry. First gift, a bunch of small silver earrings. I thanked him but reminded him that jewelry wasn't my thing. First anniversary, I got one carat diamond studs in yellow gold. We fight. He calls me ungrateful. I say he's not listening to me. Store wouldn't allow me to return them only allowing store credit. I compromised telling him I would wear them occasionally if I could put the stones in a white gold setting. He agreed. For years I thought I was probably the A.H. for not being grateful. Years pass, and more jewelry gifts. I return what I can. A ridiculously expensive diamond tennis bracelet. Another argument. Another expensive necklace after I made the mistake of saying it was pretty. I didn't make a fuss, just thanked him and put it away. I figured out that he gives me jewelry because he wants me to wear it. I said I understood this was the reason he did it but again told him that I don't wear jewelry and asked him to please stop. Christmas morning, there is a jewelry store logo bag on the counter. I ask him if he just bought me more jewelry that he knows I hate. He gives me that smarmy smile that kids put on when they know they've messed up. I say no, not funny. Why the frick would you buy me jewelry again when you know I hate it? First he says he forgot. Then he says cause it was simple. It's a yellow gold diamond and emerald necklace. I say several times to stop buying me jewelry and I hate jewelry. I give him the bag and say take it back please. He is pissed. 
The next day I try to talk to him about it, but he says I'm ungrateful. He says his aunt hated chocolate, but when she was given chocolates, she was gracious. I said yep cause the person giving her the chocolates had good intentions and just didn't know that she didn't like chocolates. Husband knows very well I don't like jewelry and continues to insist upon giving it to me cause it's what he wants. I tell him he's disrespecting me cause he isn't bothering to get me anything I actually like. He says nope. I'm disrespecting him by demanding that he return the necklace. I ask what would he do if I continually bought pink shirts for him cause I want him to wear them. He hates pink. He says that he would thank me and accept them graciously. He would not wear them no matter how much I wanted him to. He has always been gracious about whatever he has received. He also told me I'm being hurtful. I might be the AA cause he is right. I'm not being grateful. NTA. Next time he gives you jewelry be gracious like his aunt. Thank you for the jewelry. Put it in the drawer. Never wear it. If he's telling you the truth that will be the end of it, I'm sure no one ever harassed his aunt to eat the chocolate in front of them. If instead he starts complaining that you never wear the jewelry you know he's full of it. You already said he wants me to wear it so perhaps you're already receiving that sort of pressure. At some point down the line you'll be able to re-gift the jewelry to friends or relatives who enjoy that sort of thing. In the meantime please start buying him pink shirts for every occasion. Dress shirts, sport shirts, polo shirts, t-shirts. Maybe mix it up with slacks, socks and shoes too. NTA his lack of consideration and respect is astonishing. And I'm betting this isn't the only area in which he refuses to listen to you. Keep the expensive jewelry and start researching how to get the best price for selling it because it will probably come in handy for paying your divorce lawyer one day. Alternatively, sell it and use the proceeds to buy whatever it is you really want. Next story. My ex-wife has turned my kids against my new family, and now my parents expect me to fix the mess. How do I fight for my kids without making things worse? I have two children with my ex-wife Lily. I never loved Lily, and she never loved me, but we were young 20-year-olds who found ourselves with an unexpected pregnancy and both sets of our families were telling us the right thing to do was marry and give our kid a family. With so much pressure on us, we did and we had our daughter when we were 21 followed by our son two years later. Our marriage was unhealthy, toxic, there was no love and eventually I moved out and filed for divorce. We got along better initially until Lily realized I wanted 5050 of the kids and that I wasn't going to let her keep them and be a paycheck. Everything changed once that happened. The kids were two and four at the time, and it was a very messy time. Two years after the divorce was finalized, I met my current wife, Farley. We got married last year after being together for three, and we recently welcomed our first child together. Lily was extremely unhappy when I met Farley. She became even more difficult to co-parent with, and she started to engage in parental alienation. She was nasty to Farley and used our kids as pawns. I tried to speak to her. She told me to frick off. To leave her and her kids the frick alone and that no other woman is going to be a parent to her children. I needed to bring it to court. I have spent thousands on court fees, gal fees, therapist fees. X refuses to fund therapy for our kids and ultimately we were told to avoid each other and to not sit together or speak in front of the kids. That's all that came from it. My kids are indifferent at best to Farley and they were not excited to become big siblings to our son. It's tragic that it has come to this because of Lily but we're at the best point we have been for a while. My older kids aren't close to Farley or their brother but at least they're not hostile and witnessing arguments between their parents. We no longer co-parent and we do something called parallel parenting because we cannot communicate. Lily has been married since also. My parents and I were able to patch things up after they apologized for pushing the marriage and they said they realized it was not the best thing for anyone but they have been extremely bothered by Farley and the kids' relationship and the lack of enthusiasm or expression of love from the kids to their brother. While Farley was still pregnant, my parents ran into the kids while they were with Lily, and they started talking about them becoming big siblings. Lily yelled and cursed at them and told them to shut the frick up, and they will only ever have one sibling. My parents were furious. They then came to me and told me I should make Lily respect them. I told them I could not, and that Lily is a grown woman and the courts have spoken, so they need to just avoid her if they don't want her yelling at them. My parents told me my attitude is wrong and it's going to harm my kids if I don't make their mother stop. They're still angry, and now I feel like I need to ask. Ata. N.T. They the courts decided what's best for the children, and beyond that is harm to the children. Your parents actually harmed your children by overstepping the custody agreement. Remind them of that, and remind them that this counts as harassment what they did and your ex now has info that can be used against you if she ever decided to pursue anything legal. I hope they see the damage they caused could have potentially caused for you once you explain it. NTA your parents are being totally unrealistic. I think Lily's behavior is awful, and you're right in that telling her to be nice and respectful if anything will make her worse. But my kids are indifferent at best to Farley, 
and they were not excited to become big siblings to our son. It's tragic that it has come to this because of Lily this is pretty standard for a lot of blended families. No, Lily is not making this easy for you but there are other two adults involved here with the responsibility to make this work. Your marriage and a new baby were always going to be a challenge for the elders too. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.